everybody, and welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their hearts with your hosts, us. It's Ariel and Raylene. And today, I am away from home. Oh my, far from home, just like Peter Parker. <laughs> I, <laughs> yes, I am currently staying in Lunenburg. Um, everyone might recall, well, I, actually, I think it would be insane for you all to recall, but um, last year around the same time, I also came to Lunenburg because it was my boyfriend and I's anniversary. Mm-hmm. And now we think this might be a tradition to like go to Lunenburg every year for our oh, anniversary because okay. that's cute. That is cute. <laughs> so we came to this town and we have um rented the exact same airbnb no that we got last time <laughs> yeah because we loved it and we were like why change a good thing right um so we are in the same airbnb and today we, or last night we went to a bookshop and today we went to two bookshops so <gasps> i will have another anniversary book haul which last year i did a lot of damage on and this year i also did a lot of damage Ooh, i would on, love to so. look back at last year's haul and see um oh my god if you read any of those books of i don't know I actually read <laughs> Uh, yes so for everyone who's watching in the video version of the podcast um i've tried to set up a semi cool it's weird because this actually i'll i can move the camera i realize in in this modern age um this is a really cool little airbnb so i'm like showing it off on the camera right now hey and uh, i'm trying to put the camera back got actually i should take a photo for the instagram of how dodgy my setup is <laughs> <laughs> i have the camera on top of a book on top of a can of coffee oh on God. top of a bowl on top of ariel i'm books. scared <laughs> you you're scaring me <laughs> <laughs> if you guys hear a crash that's what it was my, the video my is over <laughs> we're not a video podcast Mm-mm. anymore um but yeah, I really love this space and really love this town and uh, I'm having a lot of fun. I also just finished doing the big tiling project <gasps> I was doing yes. in my bedroom. And it was like hilariously more emotionally taxing than I thought <laughs> no it was going to be. Yeah. It just, I think it was just because I've kind of... Uh, taken some time off of doing renovations Mm. and like just getting back into it I was like oh yeah I'm dirty and sweaty all the (laughs) time and like things always go a little wrong and you have to fix them and you think you're almost finished and you're not you know what I mean like it's just like that back and forth all the time and I was like I'd kind of forgotten what that was like and I was just so exhausted but the day I like I finished it then the next day I posted the video Mm. and then we came to town so it's sort of like time to get away I feel yeah. yes <laughs> oh that's good, good timing I'm glad timing. you were able to make it all happen like that <laughs> yeah exactly so I am excited to do my big book haul with you but how are you doing over there how's uh how's your coast pretty good pretty good so I, I was talking about this on our most recent live show with our patrons but I started doing daily yoga this month yes and yes. I'm really loving it um so I'm following oh, wow. uh like a 30-day yoga journey with yoga with adrian everybody knows her nice. she's awesome um and it's one that she put out last year so i'm just kind of like doing this random one that she put out last year and so far yeah. i'm really loving it like i've had to miss a couple of days because of you know being too busy not getting home until 10 p.m or whatever but i've been consistent with it as much as i can be and i'm really loving yeah. it it's very relaxing Oof. there was one day that was truly just about like being still and kind of meditating, which was cool. Yeah. There was another day that was like a full on ab workout. So it's it's mm. nice. It's got balance and I'm feeling very chill about it. And it's nice that I can like take that time to just like not do nothing, but you know what I mean? Like just like rest my mind and kind of get away from screens and books and whatever. Yeah, and yeah. it's just really, really nice. So I'm loving that. But the slightly less fun thing that happened the other day is my phone Uh-oh. died. <laughs> Oh yeah. Like I totally. I went to bed, you know, set all my alarms, woke up the next day and like 2 hours after I was supposed to wake up, I was like, "Why didn't my alarm go off?" Go to look at my phone and it's dead. I was like, "Oh, did it not charge? Like did I is there something hmm. wrong with my charger?" Go plug it in yeah. and do a different charger, different plug. Nothing happens. I was like, "What the hell?" I was like, "Kyle, can you try plugging this into yours?" And he's like, 
nothing's happening. And I said, I think my phone has died. Like just randomly oh, no. just killed itself. Like it's dead now. <laughs> and I don't know what happened because I didn't do anything to it the day before. It just randomly died. And I was like, you know what? It was just, it's wow. time. It's just time to move on. So I had to go get a yeah. new phone, which was a little annoy- annoying, but also kind of, you know, kind of nice because the screen wasn't working yeah. as well as it could have been on my old okay, phone. Yeah, so totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm at now. Now I have a green phone, which is cool with no case. Oh, you went with the green one. Yeah, I had barely any choice. There was a green one and a blue okay. one because I I like to stick <laughs> I, with the oldest iPhone I possibly can because I'm cheap. Yeah. And so I was like, can I please upgrade to an 11? And the guy was like, no, we don't have any 11s or 12s. You have to get a 13. And I was like, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> and the only ones you have. 14 now right i would assume so yeah so yeah i hate yeah. it i if, if i had my way i would be on an iphone 9 right now but i had to last yes. time i upgraded i had to go from like a 7 to a 10 and now i'm having to go from a 10 to a 13 like oh, the, the system cool. is rigged okay. i really wish i could just <laughs> level up one at a time but they won't let me yeah um, but yeah they only had a green one and a blue one so i went with the green one it's very beautiful and cool. like foresty green i'll show the people on the video oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's it's kind of oh, dirty, it but it's, wow, it's very nice. And I ordered a case that's got like pressed flowers in it because oh, I thought that would look pretty. really cute and botanical. <laughs> so pretty excited <laughs> about that. But green. right now it's just a naked phone, which really scares me. I really don't like not having a case on it, but I went with the stressful. ordering online route because it was like way cheaper. So yeah, <sighs> scary stuff. But yeah, that's... fingers crossed for the next week. I know. I'm just like, maybe uh, I'll just leave my <laughs> phone at home. You know, I don't need to bring it with me. <laughs> It's funny. I don't know what, exactly. like how we used to get by. I mean, phones used to be so much more powerful, much stronger, but they didn't need, used oh, to I need cases. The opposite. You know what I mean? The phone I think used it, to no, be a case. No, I think it's the opposite. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Like before iPhones. Yes. Yeah. Like the, they were the like flip phones and stuff. Yeah, they were, they were safe. They were powerful. Robust because you weren't going to smash a giant screen. Yeah. Um, but then... I don't know if you remember in high school, we, everyone just had smashed phones because do you remember that? Like everyone's glass was always broken. I would assume I so. I don't the... really remember most people having iPhones. No, know. it was very rare. It was rare. Um, Only the but cool like, kids. I, I really remember in, in high school, which was when the phones, st- like iPhones started becoming a thing mm. for us when we were kind of in high school. And then in, um, in early university, yeah, everyone just had literally smashed yeah, it's screens true. all the I, time. I've somehow, knock on wood, never had a smashed screen mm. on an iPhone, which I don't understand how I've managed to do yeah. that. I drop it all but, the time, and I don't have screen protectors on them either. <laughs> they've gotten so much better. Like the glass is is such a, a, a feat of engineering mm. because they know that people are smashing them all the yeah. time, so they don't really smash anymore. Um, I remember having an ipod touch oh, yeah. that was smashed and like it would literally kind of cut me mm. like because of the little glass pieces yeah. and like that's just not a thing anymore because the the glass that they use for the iphones anyway this isn't a tech talk, but <laughs> it's tech just, talk. i just find it very interesting we don't really notice these like imperceptible changes that happen right. but it's amazing how strong this glass is while also still being uh super sensitive yeah. to us tapping and like you know what I've started doing really? What? That's really weird. I've started on, on the iPhone using the sliding text. <gasps> I used to do that. Do you- and then I had to turn it off because I, if I wasn't using the sliding text, it would make, I, you, remember, you remember, I used to send you the craziest typos. It was because Your I had that turned time. on. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was a crazy I had to time. turn it off. I could not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've started like doing the sliding and I'm like, actually... This is an innovative way to text. <laughs> Maybe this oh, is man. better than like typing. Hilarious. <laughs> um, okay, so it's time to do my book haul because I'm just too oh, excited that I it. can't wait. Um, however, I need to take my sweater off. So pause once. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about these books because I'm so excited. The first two that I have to talk about are books that I picked up. At, um, I actually picked them up at Lunar River Bound, oh. but I picked these up a few days ago okay. because they were doing a book event. So I decided to, to go and check it out mm. and it was really fun. Um, anyways, while I was there, I was like, are you guys technically open? <laughs> because it was like late oh. hours. I was like, are you technically <laughs> open? Because if so, I'd love to pick up the books that I ordered. <laughs> um, and they were like, oh, yeah, we are open. So I picked these two books up and paid for them. Um, and Raylene, I think 
I think you're going to be interested. I don't know. I'm going to be jealous again. I always get jealous of the books you buy. Okay. I think you're going to be jealous of this one, but maybe not. Let's see. The first one is called Talk to My Back by Yamada Murasaki. It's beautiful. It is a very thick (gasps) um, graphic novel, boy. Let me show you the art style. Oh, I love it. It's a very minimalist. um, It's sort of like proto manga in a way Mm -hmm. um and so this is really this i was when i heard about this i was so excited so this is a new release by drawn and quarterly Mm. you know the best graphic novel publishers (laughs) out there but it is um like a republishing so basically this was written between 1981 and 1984 oh, cool. um and it was a serialized set of stories yeah. so they're kind of it's the same main character but the stories aren't really connected right. they're just like different slice of life moments okay um and it's about this mother she's got two children and she's just like you know very working class slash middle class life um, of a working mother in the 80s in Japan and her husband's always away at work Mm -hmm. she's always taking care of her children and it's just these like reflections on what that was like okay and so it says explores the fraying of Japan's suburban middle class dreams through a woman's relationship with her two daughters as they mature and assert their independence and with her husband who is rarely home but expects his wife to fulfill his every need Mm. Um, it is so, so beautiful. I've started reading it. Um, it says occupies a sacred place in the history of women's cartooning in Japan. So I guess this was like a very, um, important historical thing. And I'm literally like a quarter of the way through because I started reading it and I couldn't stop. Mm. I was like, this is so stunning. It's so, so, so good. That's awesome. I'm just absolutely loving it, and yeah, I think this is really cool. I think it's cool, like, you know, when things get reissued, mm-hmm. because it brings something old back into a new, in it with new packaging and, and like, yeah. a new marketing, but it's the old thing that we're all, like, revisiting. I think that's awesome. That's very awesome. And then the other one is called It's Lonely at the Center of the Earth by Zoe Thorogood. Ooh, um, I and love so that. I know. So first of all, look at how good this cover is. It's like a woman, I think she's dancing, but she also looks like she's sort of floating in the middle of her messy kitchen. And it says it's an autobiographical novel. It says cartoonist Zoe Thorogood records six months of her own life as it falls apart in a desperate attempt to put it back together again in the only way she knows how. So it's about an artist um, and her life. And it's like I said, it's autobiographical, but it's one of these graphic novels that has like every page is almost a different style. And like little pops of color, but it's mostly black and white. Uh, Yeah. So it just looks really cool and strange. Yeah. I I think I saw some, I think somebody might've recommended it to me. And I, when I looked it up, I was like, this looks really strange. Mm -hmm. I gotta check that out. (laughs) So those are the two graphic novels I picked up. Um, Okay, oh God, I'm so excited. Last night we went to Elizabeth Books and I had so much fun wandering around. It's a used bookstore that in Lunenburg is open from 5 p.m. till 10 p.m. Oh, so it's like- I was wondering, I was was gonna say, it's never seems like it's open. I remember when we went there, they were not open and it was like midday. No, so it's a a nighttime (laughs) bookstore, which is really fun and very cool. Um, and oh yes, I needed to mention, as you will recall, one of my resolutions for this year is to visit mm-hmm. all of the bookshops in Nova Scotia. So this weekend I'm crossing off three of them nice. and I happen to have already been to them, but, um, I'm going to be starting a webpage on our website oh, nice. that chronicles everything. Okay. Good. Okay. So I thought I'd, I'd give that a shout out. So I went to Elizabeth books, my boyfriend, he got a couple of books. Um, but I just happened to not see anything that really caught my eye this time. I remember last time I got like five books yeah. there. So it's always a hit or miss cause it's a totally used book bookshop Mm -hmm. um so you never know what you're gonna find so i didn't find anything but i did check that off the list and then today we started by going to 
block shop books Mm. so block shop books is one of these bookshops that is just like immaculately curated everything there is interesting yeah and i'm like whoa like such great taste from uh the shop owners there and when we came in oh really when i tell you i was so excited when we came in there was a tiny little dog who ran up to us and the dog the the dog owner slash the shop owner was like this is my new puppy that i just got i adopted her yesterday from halifax (laughs) and i was like oh my god what is her name and her name is chica (laughs) (laughs) i mean all of that is perfect She's a tiny little black uh, fluffy dog. Oh my god, she had the sweetest little ears. I did get some photos of her, so that will go on the Instagram. I need to see this for sure. <laughs> um, Chica is now um, the own. Hopefully, it will stay. Like literally, like I said, she just got adopted two days ago. So obviously, you never know if an adoption will work out. So, but she seemed like she was really fitting in with the bookshop. Oh, good. <laughs> and to the point where the lady was just laughing because, like, the shop owner, whose name I sadly forget, but the, um, she was laughing because she, the Chica was acting so at home. Oh. So she, like, came up and she'd, like, get like look at us and we pet her and then she'd run over and she'd jump up on the armchair and then sit and watch us <laughs> she's like <laughs> she was meant to be a bookstore dog <laughs> exactly um and she's so little and she's like one or two years old Aww. um she's a, re- a rescue anyway she was the best so that was definitely really exciting um but then i got four books there oh my Ooh, okay. four so first of all i know i'll go faster the first one is hen drawn halifax oh, nice. by emma fitzgerald you may recall that uh last year i read her book about the south shore right yes um so this is the book she wrote before that which is all about halifax and i was like cool i'm leaning into yep. my nova scotian roots i say roots they're not roots <laughs> yet but i'm planting them <laughs> they're just seeds my dad was born here so maybe that yeah, counts as roots um okay the next book i got oh i'm intrigued about this one it's called very cold people i thought that said very by... old people at first <laughs> <I was laughs> very like, what a title old people <laughs> very cold people by sarah manguso um it's published by hogarth hogarth press mm. who i feel like has a pretty good reputation yeah um And I just, okay, so first of all, I just thought I was very entranced by the cover. Secondly, I started reading the first page and I was like, oh, you know what? I'm kind of feeling this. I'm kind of feeling, um, yeah, you know, I'm sort of feeling, I'm feeling the vibe here. And then the the synopsis is about a a girl who is growing up in a Massachusetts town that is very like rich, upper class, but her family doesn't really fit in and they're all pretending. And I'm like, ah, a classic facade. (laughs) Um, I thought it sounded fun. So I grabbed it. Of course. And then the next bookshop I went to had a bunch of them in their new section. So I think this is a new release. Oh, okay. Um, Because I haven't, I haven't yet heard of it. The next two books I got were both in the like um, writers section, mm. like books about writing. Nice. And you know I like a book about writing. Of course. So I got two very strange choices <laughs> for me. The first one is In the Margins on the Pleasures of Reading and Writing by Elena Ferrente. Okay. So this is weird simply because I haven't read any of her novels. Yeah. But I've done this with loads of authors, like Haruki Murakami, <laughs> Stephen King. Like I've read loads of these bo- these authors' books about writing. Yeah. But then I have never read their novels. I mean, I'm you like may as well keep that kind of. Yeah. Why right. Stop? And so, speaking of which, Joan Didion's book about <laughs> writing, I I feel like this is just such a strange gap for me. Like I feel. This is of like a weird comment on I like bookish identity, but mm. I feel like I am a Joan Didion person, but yeah. I've never read Joan Didion. Yeah. Like I, I feel like mean. I would like Joan Didion if I read her. I just haven't. The problem is that I started reading The Year of Magical Thinking, and it was so sad that I got scared. Yeah. <laughs> I never yeah. read anything else by her. Um, but then I saw this one, and it's a collection of her essays from '68 to 2000 that have to do with writers and writing mm-hmm. and and that whole genre so i'm like you know what maybe that's where i'll start i'll try i'll try a new entry point into joan um as opposed to that very sad tragic yeah book. i need to build up to that i need to build <laughs> Get up ready. To it. so i'm excited though like two new books about writing and they're both short yeah those look awesome 
I think that's cool. Okay, and then I went to Lunenburg Bound, my favorite, so far my favorite bookshop in Nova Scotia, Ooh. because I just, there's, it's just that personal thing where you walk into a shop and it's all about the vibe, mm-hmm. right? Um, but I will say all three of the bookshops in, in Lunenburg are like top notch, really fantastic. You can easily spend an hour, even though they're all really small, yeah. they're just, they have so much character. Um, I think I just love the, again, the mixture of used books versus new books. Mm -hmm. It's like really good and the staff are so friendly. Although they don't have Chica. (laughs) So maybe they need to, they need to think about getting a little dog. (laughs) I actually said that when I walked in, I started chatting with the, the bookshop a person who was there in Lunenburg Bound today. Her name was Kate. She was so friendly. Um, But we were talking with her and I was like, you know, the bookshop on the other corner, block shop, they just got a new puppy. And she's like, no. And I was like, yeah, her name's Chica and she's pretty cool. And and she was like, I've been trying to get us to get a cat. This I'm needs like, to well, happen. you might need it in order to compete in this competitive book market. Right. I know that's um, lucky the, the bookshop that's like the u- new and used bookshop close to me has many cats. So every yeah. time I go in there, there's a different cat. Like I swear they have like six different cats that they rotate. And sometimes they have that's two of them there. Mm, it's great. I love it's that. Good stuff. The first book I saw, I think you're going to freak. Well, let's <laughs> see. I think you're going to forget about this one. The first book I saw when I walked in, I just locked eyes oh with God. this book and I was like, you're coming with me. <laughs> um, the Boy and the Dog <gasps> by Sheshu Hase. Look at this, Rayleigh. I, Look at this. I want to add that to my like cat collection, even though it doesn't make sense. Like, but it's the same vibe. It is. It's the exact same vibe. <gasps> and it's small. Like, I don't know. Yeah, how I, I can you. see it. I can see that it's small. I don't small. know if you can tell, oh. but it's like a little bit of a small, short book. Oh, my God. And it's got... Um, like nice spacing it's on nice. the pages. It's, it's Everything's like a little nice. short, chubby book, but the the art is perfection. Yeah, it says translated from the Japanese by Allison Watts. I recognize <laughs> hitting, that name. <laughs> it's hitting every single one of our little checkpoints here. Um, so I I don't know anything about this author. Shishu Hase has published many best-selling novels in his native Japan. Oh, I see. Okay. It's a, um, I'm not sure if this is his first book that's been translated into English, but it's the, oh, I'm pretty sure it's new because it was in the new mm, section, you okay. know, like new release section. Oh my God. Okay. Get, this is going to, this is going to get everyone. <clears throat> One dog changes the life of everyone who takes him in on his journey to reunite with his first owner. <laughs> We're all going to cry. We're all gonna, everyone who reads I'm this crying book already. Is gonna... <laughs> it says, following a devastating earthquake and tsunami, a young man in Japan finds a stray dog outside a convenience store. Um, the man decides to keep him, becoming the first in a series of owners on the dog's five-year journey to find his beloved first owner, Hikaru, a boy who has not spoken since the tsunami. <gasps> oh, that sounds That's too so much. good. It sounds so good. And oh my God, really, look at how pretty the little... Um, I was going to ask you to show me beneath the jacket. So thank you for doing it's that. It's beautiful. <laughs> It's just beautiful. It's very nice. So I was like, wow, we are off to a good start at this bookshop. Yeah. So next up, very close to that, I found this book, which I was really excited about because I had considered ordering it online. Oh. And then I was like, wait, we're about to go into a bunch of bookshops in a few days. I'll just go and see if they have it's it. It's always and better to find did. it in the wild. Yeah. <gasps> it's called Aesthetica by Ali Robottom. Have you heard of this one? No, but that looks like such an aerial book. Like it, I know, everything right? about it, the title, the cover, <laughs> everything about it. It's so true. Okay. So the, also look at how bright <gasps> this one is. That's so aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> That's really bad, really. That's so bad. Okay. It's really funny because when I read the synopsis out loud to my boyfriend, he was like, you love internet books. And I was like, I would slightly change that comment. <laughs> I would say I hate most of the internet books that I read or I find them really disappointing. Yeah, you want to. But I believe in the concept <laughs> yeah. of an internet book. <laughs> I'm like, I think there should be internet books. I just don't know if we found the way to talk about right. them yet. Yes, I know what you mean. And I kind of, 
I, I sort of um, just feel like it's really difficult to talk about something while you're in the midst of mm. it. And so if you think about like the war, for example, imagine how many novels about the war came out during the war and after the war, but only a few are remembered yeah. um, as like stand out really excellent. I'm like, okay, that to me is kind of analogous to right now with the internet. I'm like, we're, we're trying to reflect on something as we're in the middle of it and it's hard. Yeah. So I find that a lot of internet books or like books about the internet are like, a little frustrating or they're not like they're somehow not deep enough yeah. they like are very shallow about the concept but i've heard incredible things about this well when i found out of it i looked it up and i read a bunch of reviews and people are i mean they're really hyping it up so basically um it's about the, our main character whose name is anna and um she is going to undergo this procedure called aesthetic <gasps> that's the name of this surgery and what it does is it completely reverts all of the plastic surgery you've ever done. Well, so you will go back to looking like what you would have looked like if you had never done plastic okay. surgery. So in that way, I kind of got picture of Dorian Gray vibes from it. Yeah. If you know what I mean, where it's like this person is frozen in time because they've done all of these plastic surgeries to themselves. Um, and now they want to like, they want to be able to, age again mm -hmm. <laughs> but they can't because their face is so frozen or whatever oh, wow. um and so this is like set in like the near future kind of a thing mm -hmm. um it also kind of sounds like uglies for adults but like a different take yes. on it yes to i totally agree um so i think that this is really interesting i'm pretty sure yeah i'm pretty sure it's set in 2017 so it's kind of like oh. it's sort of like a, a reimagining yeah. of our current time kind of a thing um it's very short. It's like 250 pages. Um, and so I'm hoping that it's like an interesting, quick ride. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see about that one. I'm intrigued. Yep, yep. <laughs> I'm intrigued. And then the final book in my haul is First Love by Gwendolyn Riley. Ooh. It's kind of scary looking, but in a cool it way. It is a little spooky <laughs> looking. It's one of these books that has like... Um, a painting mm -hmm. that probably existed before yeah it says the the cover image is cinema paradiso by gene cook from the 1980s so it's one of those books that has like a really cool painting awesome. as a picture as a cover um so this really reminded me of you know that other novel that's really big right now coco and frankenstein yes, yeah yeah this really reminded me of that because it says that it's uh, the main character's name is neve and she's in her mid thirties and she's married to a much older man. It says for now they're in a place of relative peace, but their past battles have left scars. As Neve recalls the decisions that led to this marriage, she tells of other loves and other debts. Um, so I just found it interesting mm. that it's like this like slightly stressful marriage. <laughs> yes. And I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> um, also short, looks good. So. I'm excited about that one. The final thing I wanted to mention is just that I got a little pretty journal. Oh, yeah. Um, and I just, that. yeah, these are from the Japanese paper place, which is in Toronto. And I bought one of them last time that I was here. Mm. And I'm like, oh, God, they're so beautiful. <laughs> they're so well made. So got one of those. Gorgeous. Wasn't that a big stack? That was a lot more than I thought it was going to be, honestly. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> One, two, three, four, I five, should have six, predicted seven, though. Eight, nine. nine. Nine books. You know what? You're going to have to start building your bookshelves pretty soon if you're going to be able to put those away. Because <laughs> <laughs> right now, I don't know where to put uh -oh. them. Well, I actually um, got a book. Yeah. So <gasps> I'll do Perfect. a quick little. Yeah, I've been like, Please. I've been pretty, pretty good about not buying books. But I um, discovered this book when I was preparing for the episode that came out last week with Megan, because I was yeah. looking up mushroom books. I was just Googling and um, yes, I discovered totally. this cool book. So it's called Rosewater by Tade Thompson. And it's- I've seen that cover yeah, before. Yeah, I've seen it before too, but I never knew what it was about. So this is sci-fi and it's uh. it takes place in 2066 in Nigeria. So it's like a near future Nigeria. And it, it sounds like there's like a dome of some kind that people are like living under. And the, but the mushroom part is that there's like this fungus that has like, 
I think it's burrowed underneath the town, underneath the city. Okay. And it will like come out and attach itself onto people's skin. And some people can use it as like a network to communicate. So the main character is one of these people who has the power to like use this network. And so he's psychic and like has all these cool kind of powers. And that's all I really know about it because I don't want to go into it knowing too much. But I, I just thought mm-hmm. that that mushroom connection was really interesting. Like this one came up, I was reading a Reddit thread and a whole bunch of people were like, this book has such a cool mushroom aspect. So I was like, (laughs) all right, hook it up. It seems really cool. So yeah, I'm hoping to read it soon because one of my resolutions is to read 50% or more of the books that I buy this year. So I am hoping to read the books like soon after I buy them so that I can just stay on top of it. That's helpful. So I'm hoping to read this one real soon while I'm still excited about it. But yeah. Because you would hate to get to the like second half of the year and then basically everything you read has to be things that you bought this year. Like it would yeah. just be so stressful. Well, you want to hear something funny actually? On <laughs> oh, no. I have okay. spreadsheets for everything, obviously. So I have a yes. spreadsheet for all the books I've bought, um, just like I did last year. But I what I did is around the like number 30 mark, I wrote this note to myself. I put it in like huge letters. It's like got a red outline or whatever. And it says, if you haven't read most of the books that you've bought by this point, think about what you're doing. (laughs) It's a warning to myself (laughs) that if I get down to book number 30 and I haven't read most of them, I'm in trouble. (laughs) You're in trouble. (laughs) So I I see that every time I open it up. So I'm like, think about what you're doing. And so I have been, I've been thinking about what I've been doing and I'm so far pretty successful, pretty successful in my mission. Funny. But yeah, that's it. Just the one book for me. <laughs> All right. Well, tell us about the rest of your reading this uh, this week, though. Well, yeah, I've actually been doing a lot of reading, which is really exciting. So, right, because it's been kind of two weeks yes, since our last update. Exactly. Yeah. It's been a while. So what happened a couple of weeks ago is that I uh, wanted to read a book, wanted to do a reading vlog for our patrons because I was homesick and I was like, you know what? This is a great opportunity Mm. to read something just like all in one sitting. And so I wasn't sure what I wanted to read. So I actually sent you a voice clip. Let's insert that here. Hey, yo, buddy. So I have three books that I need you to pick from for my next read. I am going to be lying in bed trying to read a book in one sitting. And so these are my options. First up, The Factory by Hiroko Oyamada. Idle Burning by Rin Usami, and Winter in Sokcho by Elisa Shua Dusipin. So uh, I'm sending you a picture so you'll see that they're all pink and um, they're all short translated fiction and they all sound so good. So please pick for me which book you want me to read today. And then you responded by helping me pick which book I was going to read. So let's plunk that in here. Hello, Raylene. So this is so much fun. I, first of all, just need to mention that all books should be pink. (laughs) They're so beautiful. Those are the three prettiest books ever. This is a difficult decision because I think all three of these books sound phenomenal. And I think you're going to like all of them. I don't think any of them will be faster reads than the others. Like, they're all very short, very similar in um, length and stuff. So I think that's not really my contributing factor. So I am going to pick just based on my own excitement. (laughs) And I'm going to pick Idol Burning by Rin Usami. Because I obviously just gifted that to you for Christmas. And we talk all the time about how much we love when we read books really soon after buying them. And in this case, after gifting them. And I would just love to know how you feel about that book um, right away. So I picked that one. Woohoo! So that was really fun. So I obviously I presented you with three pink books and you chose me a book to read. And so I did. I did end up reading the book that you picked for me. So that was Idol Burning by Rin Usami. High school student Akari has one passion, her Oshi, her idol. Masaki Ueno is a member of famed pop group Maza Maza, and the novel begins with the news that he has punched a fan. Akari must deal with the aftermath that this event causes, as she is known in the community as one of his most devoted fans. She diligently updates her blog, dedicated 
related to Masaki and must decide whether to stay by his side or abandon him, as many fans have done. This novel explores teenage obsession, disconnection in the age of connection, and shines a light on the seductive power of social media and the money-making schemes of the pop industry. It reveals the humanity that lies beneath an idol's on-stage persona and demonstrates you can never know everything about another person, no matter how dedicated you may be. So this book was really really good and uh, like it, oh, i'm really glad yes. that you chose this for me but also that you <laughs> gave it to me in the first place because mm -hmm. i probably would have never discovered this book on my own so thank you for that mm. but yeah Yay. it was a great book like it's very short obviously i read it in like just over two hours and okay. um it was yeah it was just awesome like it's so wow. it's the main character is this high school girl who is obviously obsessed with this um pop star and the event at the beginning of the book where he punches someone, it seems like that's going to be like the kind of point of the book, but it's not. It The book is yeah. all about the main character and kind of what it does to her and, you know, mm. kind of losing a person that is quote unquote close to her. Um, it's and because she feels like she's lost him. Like she feels like her whole world has fallen apart because he's her everything. And mm. so it's interesting to see how that has an effect on someone. Um, so it was just, yeah, really, really interesting book. And I really liked it. I really think you would like it too. So what a success. It That's was a awesome. success. So I yeah, I recommend it. It's a strange little book, but it's very good. Oh, and it also has pictures, which I don't know if you what? realized when you bought it. I did not realize. Yeah, so I showed these off in the reading vlog <gasps> I did, but each chapter starts with images. Oh my gosh, I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, and there's like five chapters or something. So there's like five cool um, illustrations wow. throughout the book. And man really loved that but that's so sick the day did not end there i ended up no. reading a second book that day because wow. i got up early like as if i was going to go to work and then realized i wasn't feeling well so but then i just stayed up so it was like 8 a.m and i was like let's just read the day away and so i ended up also reading winter in sokcho in the quiet seaside town of sokcho which is on the border of north and south korea not much happens during the cold winter months a half korean half french woman works in a guest house and is awakened from her sleepy existence when an unexpected guest arrives. He's a graphic novelist from France looking for inspiration for the final volume in his comic series, and he asks the protagonist to guide him on trips to discover an authentic Korea. This novel is quiet, introspective, and an intimate view of identity, belonging, and alienation. So, another great short book, which I was really glad to have read. Um, yeah, so wow, you're really knocking him out. Really here. knocking him out. I just like, I'm just loving a, a translated pink book. Um, but this one <laughs> was so beautiful and beautifully oh written. Oh my God. And just like what a role. quiet and lovely. It kind of reminded me of like a Ghibli movie, but more of the like adult Ghibli movies. Oh gosh. If, yes, yeah, yes, if you've yes. seen any of those. So just kind of like about a woman who's just kind of maybe a little bit lost feeling a little out of place because also she's a mixed race woman living in Korea. She's half French. And basically the story is her dad just like left after she was born. Like he just took off. He was like a tourist or something and then he's just gone. So she's kind of lived with this alienation of being like, who am I? What am I doing here? And mm. it was just really lovely really really lovely and seeing like the different cultures kind of coming together because the other main character is this guy from france and he is just like holding himself up in her guest house to work on his book and so he's always drawing and he's like okay take me take me somewhere like he wants to go see um the border of north korea and south korea and she's like mm -hmm. okay i'll take you there and so it's just like this cute little kind of friendship and almost seems like hmm is it going to be romantic i don't know and like it's right. yeah just a, a quiet little introspective journey and i really liked it and once Dang. again i think you would really like it too oh my god okay great but that's not it that's not all this woman kept re did you read the factory i'm gonna lose no it. <laughs> i wish i had i really wish i had but i, I could have but i ended up not Oh, the final man. book For that everyone, i read wait hold on hold on i think we need to just tell people the journey of that book real sure. quick so basically, uh, two years ago, I read The Hole yeah. um, by the same author, and I absolutely loved it. And and then I and at the same time, I had bought her other book, mm -hmm. The uh, Factory, yeah. and I was like, hopefully, I'm going to read this soon. So then Raylene read The Hole, and you also really yeah. loved it. And you're like, I really want to read The Factory soon. But this came right after Raylene had betrayed me <laughs> um, and had read a bunch of books that we were excited to read together yeah. on her own. 
And so I was like, enough is enough, Raylene. You're not allowed to read The Factory until I've read it because whatever. And Raylene was like, okay, how about if by the end of the year, like you have until the end of the year to read it. And that's like enough of a, of a time Uh difference. And I was like, okay, that's fair. That's the deal. That year has ended. And (laughs) Raylene messaged me near the end of the year. And she was like, the end of the year is coming and I'm very excited to read the factory. And I was like, oh my God, I totally forgot about that promise. And so at the end of last year, Raylene, I started reading the factory. Oh really? (laughs) Yes. I made it. I'm probably like halfway through. Yeah. But then the beginning of this year started and I had all these things I had to read. Um, and so I haven't kept going. And so every, you messaged me two times b- being like, should I read this or the factory? And I'm like, you should read that other book. <laughs> and then, oh, I and see. Then, and then uh, this time you sent me these three books and I'm like, you should not read the factory. <laughs> that's so funny i totally could have read it that same day if i wasn't sick because i was so tired like i just got so sleepy that i was like i need to take a break and i just kept taking so many breaks that like i didn't finish winter in sokto until like 6 p.m even though i started at at, like noon so um i could have done it if i was more strong that day but you're lucky i was weak i was weak and i was not (laughs) able But no, I um the other book that I finished reading, I actually just like powered through the last bit of it yesterday. Oh wow. It's been a real journey. No way. 112263 <gasps> wow. by Stephen King. This woman, look at her go. <laughs> In the afterword of this book, Stephen King states that he originally tried to write the book in 1972. Merely nine years after the events that took place in Dallas in 1963, the wound was still too fresh, and there was far too much research involved for a full-time teacher. So it was not until multiple decades later that this novel saw the light of day. It portrays high school teacher Jake Epping, who teaches GED classes on the side. One of his adult students submits a harrowing essay about a gruesome event from his childhood that left him the sole survivor of a brutal attack on his family. Soon after, Jake learns about a portal to 1958 in the back of the town's local diner. The owner, Al, has tried and failed his chosen mission to use this portal to change the course of history and prevent JFK's assassination. He asks Jake to complete the mission for him, and the rest is history. So, oh my god, this book, first of all, I just need to start off by saying this is now one of my top three favorite Stephen King novels. Oh my Probably god. Probably top two, actually. Like, it is still wow. my favorite, but this, I think, sure. is my second favorite now. Like, this one. <gasps> wow. It was just, like, beyond what I could have expected. And I mean, yeah. a lot of, you know, people just think of Stephen King as just, like, kind of a fun read, you know? he's sure. He writes yeah. a great book, great plot, whatever. This book, like, goes beyond that and mm. kind of transcends, like, Stephen King Damn. as a writer a little bit. It's like, I feel like anybody who has assumed that he's like, you know, not literature, quote unquote literature. I mean, this is up there. I mean, it's definitely still a Stephen King book. You know, it's still written the way (laughs) Stephen King writes, which is always so fun. But I just wanted to say like, it's a really, really good book. So the amount of research that went into this book is so evident. And now like after Mm. reading the afterward, I was like, you know what? I I understand Stephen, like he had to read so many books and like, he actually like Mm. went to a lot of the places that are depicted in the novel, which Mm. is like all over the place. And so he kind of like followed, you know, his character around so that it could be really authentic and genuine. So just that in itself was like, wow, go Stephen, go. but I really love this book. Like the the time travel aspect was really cool the way it was done. So like there's this portal in a yeah. uh, in a diner and the guy who owns the diner basically has gone into it many, many times and has tried the best he could to mm. go back and like basically stay in the past until 1963 in order to save JFK. Right. But he gets sick and comes back and is like, I can't do it. Jake, can you please do this for me? And he's like, okay he obviously ends up doing it and it's just so interesting because like when you when you go into the portal it's 1958 it's always the exact same time exact same day but then if you come back through the portal it's two minutes later in the real world right so it's no matter what you do it's only going to ever be two minutes so you could keep going back and forth you know for a long long time if you wanted to do that for whatever reason but the main character ends up do you age um yes that's the other thing you do age so like at the beginning of the book um al the guy who owns the diner comes he like 
you know, the main character sees him. And then the next day he sees yeah. him again. And he's like, why do you look so much older and so much okay. more ill? Like what happened? He's like missing teeth right. that you, he had the day before. And so that's okay. the thing that like kind of convinces him. He's like, something weird is going on here. And so when he okay. starts like explaining, this is a, a portal into the past, he's like, uh. it actually kind of makes sense. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's really cool. And, um, he like is able to prove that if you go back into the past mm -hmm. and change something, then it 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 because he like you know right he like carves something on a tree or whatever and then he goes back and checks it mm -hmm. and he's like in the in the present day it's it's definitely there so he realizes okay I can change the past but the mm -hmm. other cool thing about the book is that the change uh, the past doesn't want to be changed which makes sense so like if you're oh. trying to change something like things will kind of get in your way and the past right. makes it hard for you to change these things and obviously like the bigger the change is the harder it becomes and so mm -hmm. um, Jake the main character. Like I mentioned in the synopsis, there's uh, a student of his wrote this essay about something terrible that happened to him when he was a young boy. And Jake is like, I want to I want to go back and fix that for him so that he can like have a better life. And so that's his mm. first mission is to go back and see if he can fix that thing. And then he kind of builds up from there. Um, and yeah, I, I love this book. Like the parts where he's just living in the past were so lovely because he's obviously there for many years. And so he kind of has to like create a life for himself and it's just like lovely i like almost cried at one part wow, it's just okay. a really lovely story of him and like the people he gets to know and yeah it's really really good stuff so highly highly wow. highly recommend this book oh the one last thing i wanted to say is it, in some yeah. ways it's like not a sequel to it but it has some characters from it oh. in it because it takes place in 1958 Damn. so it takes place like right after the events of the childhood version of of it and so he meets a couple of the characters and it was like this is awesome like he spends a lot of time in dairy in the book so mm. for people who like it you know you've got to read this to see a little little extra something something so that's it damn yeah i'm so happy for you like not only did you, this means you've now read one of your big yes. books for the year. So that's huge. But also like, it is so exciting when you read a different book from your favorite mm. author and you love it as well. Yeah. Like it's just so exciting and, and fun and happy. So that's just like triple achievement. It's and awesome. So yeah. Fun. I had no idea what to expect from this one because it's so different from his other books. Like it's not horror at all. It, like right. it has some horrific moments of course, but it's mostly just like historical and sci-fi which is not something i usually read but stephen king he can make me read anything <laughs> that's so awesome um all right well when we move wait 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 what are you currently reading well <laughs> that's not it's nothing that crazy uh, this is it's just <laughs> continuing my mission of wanting to read the books that i've bought and so the first book that i acquired this year was saga volume 10 so yes. i'm continuing my journey i'm now on volume six of saga i okay because you're catching up. i'm you're catching up yeah last night i read three four five and i'm now on six so okay. i've read a few a few more books um but after I'm done reading Saga, I'm like, what do I want to read next? So I'm kind of pondering. I think I'm going to read a fantasy book. So yes, I'm going to okay. TBR challenge myself to read a fantasy <gasps> book. Yay. But I'm not going to say a specific one because I don't want to put any pressure on myself quite yet while I'm still okay. reading something else. But my plan, I think I know what I'm going to read. So we'll see next week if I end up reading it. But that's the last kind of um, thing that I have on my list for like this month. I'm like, because I want to read six fantasy books throughout the year. It's February, so I have to read at least one now right yeah yes true <laughs> well have you yeah. finished anything dare i ask well <laughs> dare you ask before we answer that very exciting i have breaking news <laughs> <laughs> so there is some breaking news yes, this is. week we're doing book games but i couldn't not break this news that actually raylene broke to me i had to raylene tell you. texted me yeah. um a link last night or two nights ago with some pretty heckin incredible <laughs> news and it is that there is going to be and this is so early stages yeah. so people like so like don't actually get too excited but there is going to be two new twilight books oh my god what that could even possibly mean <laughs> is so confusing so 
the piece I think that you, yeah, linked me to, Raylene, is from In Style. Mm. And the uh, title is Stephanie Mayer Just pro- Promised Two More Twilight Books, which is a little bit of a stretch. She definitely didn't promise it. <laughs> like, who did she promise it to? This website? Here's the, here's the quote uh, from Stephanie Meyer. I have got them outlined and a chapter written, I think, of the first one. So I know it's there. I'm not ready to do that right now. I want to do something brand new. For me, a lot of the joy of writing comes from creating, and I really want to do a new world and new rules and new mythology. Mythology is kind of my thing. So how is that a promise? It's not a promise. Yeah, I don't Mr. Know. In Style, Christopher Liu, who wrote this, I'm like... <laughs> like is, is she talking about the same that? world, but like not vampires? Maybe? I don't think so. I think she's. I think she's saying that she has the outlines for two more Twilight books. Oh. She's written the first chapter she wants to of do one something of them, else first. but but she doesn't even want to work on those yet. She's like <laughs> working on something new. So I'm like, I think if she does do these, it's gonna be a really long time yeah. before we actually see them. I love that. I love that she just um, won't let it go. I tried linking back to the where did this news start? Yeah. And it's in this I think it's in this article from USA Today called by Mary Cadden called Stephanie Mayer says more books coming in Twilight Saga as Midnight Sun sells 1 million copies. So first of all that's shocking to me because I really thought that Midnight Sun was a bit of a flop. <laughs> yeah. Like I feel like no, people didn't really talk about it very much. But clearly it did great, like a million copies. Mm. That's crazy. Um, and so there's a quote from the executive vice president and publisher of Little Brown Books. Mm. They say, We've, we're absolutely thrilled to bring people back to the Twilight Saga world and to celebrate this major achievement with Stephanie and the fans and booksellers who have supported her for the last 15 years. In addition to the breathtaking sales, it is profoundly gratifying to hear how much the fans are loving the novel. The resounding response to the read has been, it was definitely worth the wait. Um, Midnight Sun? Which, yeah, for Midnight Sun, which I'm like, I th- I, don't know I, I disagree. True. I have to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I really think it would be cool, though, if she were to do like a prequel, like a super prequel, like and talk, like go through Alice's journey, you know, or something like that. I feel like yes. that could be really cool. I don't, we don't need to rehash the actual Twilight Saga. Like that does not need to happen, but yeah. I would love a prequel, a little Rosalie action, like a whole book about Rosalie. I would so read totally that. Totally agree. I would so read that. So about Midnight Sun, Stephanie Meyer said that by far the most exciting part of writing it hands down is the fourth act where Edward and Bella are separated because quote, I'm free to do whatever I want. You know, like (laughs) Mm -hmm. she said, metaphorically, they were like prison bars trying to align the dialogue from this book into the other one, which I can't even imagine how difficult that would be. I I would just not do that if I had. I would just not do the sister (laughs) novel. Um, But so this is where it happened. At Books a Million's virtual live event with the author oh. on Monday, Stephanie Mayer shared with the fans what she knows for now about these new books. She says there are two more books, I think, in the world. In the world. Okay. So that's definitely Twilight, but she's not saying Bella right. or Edward, right? right? In the world that I want to write. I have got them outlined and a chapter written, I think, of the first one, so I know it's there. I'm not ready to do that right now. I want to do something brand new. Um, and then she talks about the mythology thing. So it's pretty funny how she's just said like one little thing. And people are and like, And everyone's ah! like, two new books <laughs> coming soon. It's like, they're definitely not. She says she has one chapter written. But that tidbit is enough to get me excited. Like that there will be definitely. something else. A hundred percent. Whatever that may be. A hundred percent. I mean, I'm pumped about it. I definitely I think, I definitely think that they're going to come. Like the fact that she spent so long between uh, the Twilight series and Midnight Sun. Mm -hmm. And we all knew about Midnight Sun for ages beforehand because for people that were not teenagers (laughs) when Twilight came out, basically Midnight Sun was this retelling of the story she was writing from Edward's perspective that is the same events as Twilight, Mm -hmm. but just from his perspective. But it got leaked online. And she's talked publicly about how horrible that was for her because it was unfinished and blah, blah, blah. Um, And it got somebody that she shared an early draft with leaked it online and then it just kind of went everywhere so that's obviously really horrible for a writer especially somebody who 
is so widely read. Like mm-hmm. everyone's read Twilight. So um, here she is, like whatever, ten years later, and she come. She actually did it. She actually I finished couldn't believe that it. book, yeah. and she published it. Like that's kind of amazing. So I do think that she's going to publish these two more books oh, yeah. in the series. I think it'll happen. I just think it's going to be a long time. Yeah, give, give it a few oh, years. <laughs> All right, but now cutting back to my reading. I did finish a book, really, mm. and thank God I finished The Woman oh, in the Purple good. Skirt Otherwise I by Miss Natsuko Imamura. <laughs> yeah. Natsuko Imamura was born in 1980 in Hiroshima, Japan, and now lives in Osaka with her husband and their daughter. She's been nominated three times for the Akutagawa Prize, which is one of Japan's leading most literary prize. This is the big one. And she finally won it in 2019 with this book, The Woman in the Purple Skirt. This follows two characters who are named in the novel, but more importantly are called the woman in the purple skirt and the woman in the yellow cardigan, as the yellow cardigan lady tries to basically stalk the other one. Here's the thing, Raylene. I didn't like it. (laughs) (laughs) I love that for you. That's funny. Isn't that funny? No, exactly. After everything we've been through with this novel, for me to on the other end be like, eh. <laughs> I'm glad you finished it though. Like that, at least now you can say that you read it and you so didn't like it funny. instead of just not knowing. Yeah. No, totally. So it's not like I hated it. I didn't hate mm. it. I didn't hate it. I, um, so basically I started reading it and the first section of it, I was liking it. But there were a couple of little things that were instantly bothering mm. me. And there were things that I was like, this is this is going to be consistent. So, yeah. for example, the fact that the main character kept calling this other character the woman in the purple <laughs> skirt over and over and over again made me want to tear my hair out. I was like, <laughs> she has a name. You know her name. Just say her name. Yeah. I was like, this is so frustrating. Like, just, I don't know. I just found that really annoying. And then... Um, the other thing was like, and this is kind of intentional, but the, the whole thing about the the novel is just that this one character really is obsessed with, to the point of basically, not basically, she's stalking Mm -hmm. this other character. And she like, she says that she wants to be her friend. She's like, I just really think that this woman's really cool and I want to be your friend. Mm. So I'm going to follow her around and figure out what the best way to be her friend is, which is obviously insane. Like, just go up and say hi. Yeah. But that was the problem. I kept just thinking, like, just go up and say hello. <laughs> and so that was bothering me throughout the whole book. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I never, it never, that tension never eased. Um, I mean, it does ease, but I just meant for me, like yeah. reading it, I was just like frustrated throughout the book. And then the other problem was that I just overall found it to be quite boring. And it's so interesting because I love boring books. So I don't know. I don't even know how to explain that. Like, I don't even know how exactly to put my finger on the fact that this was the kind of boring I don't really enjoy. Yeah. But there are so many boring books I do enjoy. Well, because I guess there's a difference between like, not there's not a lot happening and it's boring i guess because like there's yes. you know like no, there are books where exactly. not a lot happens but maybe it's very introspective or like there's interesting things happening yeah. in a person's head but maybe you just didn't yes. find that in this case yes i think that you have really hit the nail on the head for me on that one um i felt like i was i never felt that i sympathized with our main mm. character or was rooting for her because even when you dislike a character, you can still root for them or understand them or kind of be like, yeah, I get why she's doing what she's doing. I never understood why she was doing what she was doing. I didn't care. I just wanted her to go and say hello <laughs> and <laughs> chill out. <laughs> and she didn't. Um, so yeah, I actually found myself a little bit just kind of like skimming. I wasn't skimming, but I was just like, Oh, I didn't really read that paragraph perfectly, but that's fine. I, I always I'll do that when I'm just going. trying to finish a book. Yeah, no shame, exactly. Man. I'm just like, eh, okay, I'll just keep going. Um, so it fell a little flat for me, but not. I'm not saying like, oh, this is the worst book I've ever... No, by no means. There were some sections that I thought were interesting, and I did 
feel like the beginning was interesting. So basically, I would definitely try another book by okay, this author, yeah. if you know what I mean. Um, but for some reason, even looking at this, I'm like the woman in the per Get out of here. <laughs> I love that. We don't always agree, and that's totally fine. <laughs> I think it's great. I think it's great. It's classic um, us. It is. And so I, I will just mention that the book I'm reading hmm. is I'm still pushing through Agatha Christie's biography, and I'm excited to kind of get back into it. Yeah. I'm, I'm on page 44 now, but I really paused it to finish the other mm -hmm. one and then like i mentioned i'm also like a quarter of the way through talk to my back by yamada murasaki which i just bought and i'm loving there you go <sighs> sorry ray <laughs> <laughs> that's totally fine the when you like were taking a really Damn. long time to kind of get into it and keep picking it up i was like i feel like she does not like the book <laughs> Oh, right and i think i mean i honestly do think that's such an honest sign if you're not like being drawn to it and you're like kind of having to force yourself a little yeah. bit it's like oh no i know yeah Senor. it's like i wouldn't have been mad at you if you hadn't finished it but you told me to punish you so i would have but i wouldn't have liked it can you, know? you tell me what the punishment would have been because i am curious I, or do you want to say i mean i could i could say no, that but just I'll tell just, me i'll just tell you i was gonna make you read on a sunbeam <gasps> that would have been a good one right that because that was actually a tbr one. challenge that was one of the first tbr challenges or something like that you were supposed to and read it and then did it you yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm you i did something else to punish you because you didn't read it so i thought it would be funny and kind of full circle to make you read that book it would have been, but also because I'm you've been in I a good it. like graphic novel mood lately yeah. and um you know that one's kind of i think probably becoming a mashed potato book a little bit because you had it for a while it and it's a big book is. i just felt like it would be a lot of good things for you you know it was a good that would have been good that yeah. would have been good actually um but i'm also glad that i did finish it because yeah, yeah like i say like I didn't hate it enough that I was like, oh my God, this book is like the worst. No, I was just sort of like, yeah, okay, come on. Betray. Um, yeah. But I am also glad that I read it because it is one of the um, bigger Japanese translated novels yeah. right now that a lot of people are talking about. So I am glad now that I've read it. Totally. And I, can, uh, I know what people are talking about. Um, all right, well, that's my reading. So let's finish off this episode by doing a little book game. Ooh. Woo okay. So I'm going to send you a couple of things right now because the mm. book game that I have crafted is I have okay. chosen the first line from a bunch of books that I've oh read, but you have not. And oh you need to match up the quotes with the book. So I'm sending you a list of 16 books and there are 10 quotes that we're going to go through. So there's a few um, red herrings okay. in there because I didn't want to make it too easy for you. <laughs> so this is the list nice. of books. Okay, I see them. And oh I am also going to send you the list of quotes just so you can reference back to them while I'm reading them, just in case you need to. Nice. So there are the books and there are the quotes. So I'm just going to oh, dive in. I'm just going to dive right in. So the, yeah, so take yeah. like peruse that list Let's, and um, see if you can connect yeah. what quote, what, what book this is from. <clears throat> the Santa Anas blew in hot from the desert, shriveling the last of the spring grass into whiskers of pale straw. <laughs> Did you make them different degrees of difficult and easy? Um, not on purpose, but some of them I think are kind of obvious. So we'll see. Okay. And are you thinking that? Are you thinking that that was one of the easy ones? <laughs> ah! <laughs> the one you just read? <laughs> no. <laughs> the Santa Anas blew in hot. I don't even know what Santa Anas are blew in hot from the desert shriveling the last of the spring grass into whiskers of pale straw okay this person is feeling a little artsy with their writing yep, here that's a clue. uh that is a clue but if you want to skip and come back we can also do that oh interesting interesting <laughs> the santa anna's ay 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 senor um I've never even heard of this number 13 book, The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. What book is that? Well, I actually recommended it to a patron in a, a video recently. So oh, yes, that was did. a hint for you. <laughs> that was a little hint. <laughs> okay, let's pass on that one. Let's pass on that one. We'll loop back. Um, All right, let me read the, the next, next one. I think you'll be able to get this one. The snow in the mountains was melting and Bunny had been dead for several weeks before we came to understand the gravity of our situation. 
Secret History by Donna Tartt. All right. Very good. I'm feeling pretty sure about that one. <laughs> I had to like hand you some of them. Okay, here's the next one. When I think of my wife, I always think of her head. <laughs> when you think of your husband, Raylene, do you think of his head? No. <laughs> Not even once. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, okay, do you have on this list, do you have... Yeah, I'm going to go with the time traveler's wife. Maybe okay. that was... I do kind of feel like maybe you're trying to trick me by making that one really obvious. If you want to change your answers down the road, you certainly can. I'm marking down whether you're right or wrong right now, but we can always think about it later. Okay. Once we've gone through the list. Okay, the next one. This is my favorite book in all the world, though I have never read it. <sighs> Just like you, you've never read any of these books. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the Princess Bride. Okay. For some reason, I feel like maybe they're talking about the story itself that they're about to read. And isn't that book? I don't know. You're, okay, you're, you're definitely one. thinking the right things. Okay, okay, the next one is kind of a, I guess, like a funny sequel to that last quote. I have no idea how to write this stupid book. <laughs> Me neither. Um. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I'm going to go with me and Earl and the dying girl. Uh, just because that one seems the most irreverent. I'm not sure. Mm, though. Mm. Okay, keep going. Okay. Keep going. I feel like, I feel like you're, gonna, you're doing well so far and you're going to continue okay. to do so. The next one. <clears throat> History has failed us, but no matter. Oh, uh, good line. Um, hmm. So one of these historical-ish ones, maybe Pachinko or the Book Thief, uh, Kindred could be. Good one. I kind of forget what Kindred's about. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> okay, I really wanted to throw for you now. for some loops, which is why yeah, I do this all with books you've never read. <laughs> oh, this is very difficult. Okay, go on. To, let's do the next one. Oh, you want to do the next one? Okay. Did yeah. you? What was your? Did you guess for that one? No, I'm You're skipping like, that one. Back I'm going to okay. loop back. I'm going to loop back. All right, here's the next one. Carolyn, blood-drenched and barefoot, walked alone down the two-lane stretch of blacktop that the Americans called Highway 78. Wow. I love that first line. No kidding, huh? <laughs> no kidding. Blood-drenched and barefoot. The Americans. Ay, caramba. Okay, I'm kind of feeling like that would be maybe Kindred. I don't remember what the hell Kindred is, but I'm gonna go with Kindred. Okay. I, I feel like that might be the book where the person goes for a really big walk <laughs> looking for their daughter. I don't remember, god damn it. <laughs> oh, I feel this like is I'm fun. Thinking, I love this game. I think I'm thinking of her other book. No Octavia. worries, no worries. Go with your gut. <clears throat> Here's the next one. I love this one. This is one of my favorite first. It's actually three, like, three sentences, but I um, thought okay. I would go with them because it makes the whole picture. The gunman is useless. I know it. He knows it. The whole bank knows it. Mm. Bank, huh? Mm, bank. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what the hell the library at Mount Char is. That one feels like it might be really useful to know. <laughs> it's true. <sighs> what it's about. Um, that one is a weird book. That's something I, I can tell you without really okay. t telling you much about the plot. Uh, the gunman is useless. I know it, he knows it, the whole bank knows it. Me mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with Foe by Ian Reed. I don't feel confident at all though, oh. but hell. <laughs> okay. okay, here comes the second to last one. The stranger came out of the sea like a water ghost, barefoot and wearing the scars of his journey. Barefoot. Everyone's barefoot. Everybody's barefoot in this world. The stranger came out of the sea like a water ghost. Mm hmm. A water ghost. Barefoot and wearing the scars of his journey. Uh, I'm gonna go with the name of the wind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the name of the old wind. That guy's on an adventure. He went on a journey. This kind of just goes to show how the first line of a book can be so like mysterious and not really it's true. make a lot of sense. It's... That's what I'm learning. No, okay, no kidding, here's the no last kidding, one. Here's the last one. Okay. 
I lost an arm on my last trip home. That's interesting. Lost an arm. Lost an arm. What character doesn't have an arm? <laughs> Six of crows? It's a bunch of teens running around. I could see them. one of them losing an arm. <laughs> the Priory of the Orange Tree. He could lose an arm with like a dragon. I don't know if there's dragons in that There part, are dragons, maybe. yes. Okay, I bet you the dragon ate his arm. I'm going to go with that one. The Priory of the Orange okay, Tree. Okay, sounds good. Now we have to take it back because there's a few that you didn't guess. Yeah, so let's see if two. you can... The, the first Santa one. Anna's, the Santa Anna's and the wordy writing. The, the Santa Ana's right. blew in from the desert, shriveling the last of the spring grass into whiskers of pale straw. Wow. I'm gonna go with, um... God, now I feel like that one is kindred. <laughs> Everyone is kindred. Really? This is so difficult. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw stuff at it. I'm gonna throw white o oleander at that one. Okay, good and stuff. And then for history has failed us, but no matter, I'm gonna do Vicious by V.E. Schwab, because for some reason that's how I imagine V.E. Schwab writes. I love that. With an irreverent tone. I love All that. Right. Okay, so <clears throat> out of 10. I'm scared. What do you think you got out of 10? Two. You got four. <laughs> Damn you it, got, that's not You good. got four. So you were correct. The first quote, the Santa Ana's, was White Oleander by Janet Fitch. Oh man, that's funny. Okay. Um, the second one, Snow in the Mountains, Bunny's Dead, blah, 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 was The Secret History, which you got. Okay. Then the third one, when I think of my wife, I always think of her head. That is gone, girl, baby. That's gone, girl. I, I wish, wasn't sure if you'd seen the, movie. seen the movie. I wasn't no, sure if you've seen the movie because that is like the first line of the movie as well. So oh, I thought that that might be no. an easy one. I was wrong. No. I didn't realize how hard this game was going to be. And actually, originally, I was just going to give you the list of <laughs> literally just the 10 books, but all scrambled up. But then I thought it was way too easy. So I threw in some some dummy books and now no. I kind of regret that. I wish I hadn't done that. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. However, moving on. All Number right. four. This is my favorite book in all the world, though I have never read it. That was The Princess Bride. Very good. Oh, cool. Very, very good. And then number five. I have no idea how to write this stupid book. That was me and Earl and the Dying Girl. So, oh, cool. Okay, so I go. I started off. You really started off really strong. You like almost apart. got all of them correct. And then the second half Damn. is where it all fell apart. And it was mm. all because of the dummy books I threw in. I think that really killed it for you. Um, if I hadn't done yeah. that, I think you would have nailed this quiz. So uh, number six. History has failed us, but no matter. That was actually Pachinko. So. Oh, I, I, that's what I get for not having read that book. That's true. That one was kind of like a, I don't know, a zinger. <laughs> and then number seven, Carolyn, blood drenched and barefoot, dot, 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 was the library at Mount Char. So, oh, yeah, that okay. one is like yeah. a grand bloody tale. Okay. And then gotcha. number eight is one of my favorite books. Okay. Wish you had read it. Uh, the gunman is useless. I know it. He knows it. The whole bank knows it. That is I Am the Messenger by Marcus Zusak. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. It's an unexpected beginning, but that's uh, yeah. where everything begins. And then number nine, the stranger came out of the sea like a water ghost. That one was the Priory of the Orange Tree. So you were on the right uh, track. Yeah, yeah, you were yeah, on the right yeah. track. I think you said the name of the wind for that one. So fantasy book. Yeah, you were You were close. The first line of the that name of the wind, um, I felt like gave it away too much. So I oh, okay. um, did not choose that one. Okay. And then okay. at number 10, the final one, I lost an arm on my last trip home. That one is actually Kindred. Damn it. That one Octavia. is about, yeah, that one's about time travel. So when she said on my last trip home, it was home from the past. <laughs> yep. Wasn't a, a, a literal uh, travel like, like you thought. God <clears throat> damn it. Okay. Well, you know what? <clears throat> I think I won the last book game and I have now lost this one. That's so true. It sometimes comes the book game has around. to be hard. You know, sometimes the yeah. game, maybe it's not fun. Games aren't always fun, Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, though, I thought I thought this was going to be easier than it was. I made it harder than I meant to. <laughs> it was really hard, really. I was like looking at these. I was like, not only have I not read these books, I also don't know what half of them are. I'm like kindred. So which one am I thinking of hers? The one with her daughter. That's a parable of the sower, isn't it? I don't think there's a daughter in that one. It's a, The main character is like a tween. I there's think. one with a baby. Lilith's the bluest brood? eye? Maybe. Uh, that one's like about Lord. a vampire See, and baby I have no or something. Idea what I'm I don't know about. anything about the rest of her books either. I just know Kindred. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Listen, I tried my best. Do, wait, am I confusing? Who wrote Parable of the Sower? Octavia Butler. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. For some reason, I thought you'd also read that one. I have, but I don't really remember it. Oh. <laughs> that oh, okay, one didn't okay. stick with me. 
<laughs> I didn't stick with old Raylene. No. Uh, okay, well... Now, whenever I think of my husband, I'll think of his head and think of how sad I am. Um, all right. Thanks, everybody, so much for hanging out with us. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Even, um, yeah, maybe, I bet you people listening did way better at that quiz than I did. Yeah, I would love to know um, how everybody else did. Although, also really difficult because I just realized maybe impossible for them to play along. They couldn't see the books. <laughs> because yeah. they didn't see the list of the books. <laughs> That's true. So they would have just been guessing blind. It would have been extra impressive then if anybody could guess those first lines. Not yeah, knowing. that would have been crazy. <laughs> we are now going to go and record our Patreon-only mini-podcast where we talk about what we've been watching lately. Mm. Um, so if you're a patron or you want to maybe become a patron, you can check that out at books. Nope, at patreon.com forward slash books unbound. Thank you so much to everyone for hanging out with us this week. We will talk to you next week. Bye. Goodbye.